little late, Coop. Yeah, we had a flat. It's an Indian surveillance drone. Christopher Nolan's new sci-fi epic, Interstellar, the story of Matthew McConaughey, who plays Cooper, a scientist turned farmer who's trying to figure out what's best for humanity and his family. While on his way through space and time, he manages to come across a couple of four characters, including Anne Hathaway, two informative robots, and continuing to find his way to communicate back with his family while out in space. Hello, I'm Sam Bolton, film correspondent for Shock Radio, and also live wire critic for Corner House. And I'm here today to discuss this movie, so let's talk about the good stuff. The good stuff is that it looks and feels like a Christopher Nolan movie. It has a look that fits the film. Interstellar looks incredible. It has so many good looking backgrounds. It has so many CGI masterpieces. It's such a very well done background film and it looks incredibly. All the aspects of space and time in here work well and it shows that Christopher Nolan really does care when it comes to space. And it's almost just as good as Gravity but unfortunately it does lack a few scenes. But overall, that is a very good start. What else is good? Well, the characters and the performances of the actors. First of all, let's look at Matthew McConaughey who plays Cooper. He is trying to do what is best for his family, and we can see that in the desperation in when he's uh, trying to communicate with his daughter, how he's really wanting to figure out that he is this spirit that's communicating with her, and to understand that he is this one guy that root that will that know what it is that he needs to be done and it's and you go you go along with him as he's going through the film you want cooper to succeed you want him to do all these very big aspects of the film and it shows because it it's time to promote his character because you see him getting as a farmer and when he finally comes across NASA and they tell him that he's going to become an, an astronaut like he was trained to, you really side with him because you're thinking, wow, this guy was a formerly an astronaut. That's pretty cool for a guy that turns into a farmer. But overall, McConaughey's performance of Cooper really does shine out and it's the main highlight of the film. What else is good? Well, Anne Hathaway, despite being orderly sidelined along with Michael Caine, they do actually have very, very good characters. Caine plays the head of NASA who said and uh, Cooper off into space. And I have to say though, Michael Caine is brilliant in this film. Sure, he's not as good as he did with Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy, but he does give one of the best performances that he's done. And it truly does show because Michael Caine is such a good actor. The casting is brilliant in these films, especially from Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway and Michael Caine. They all show their characters so well. Anne Hathaway is also brilliant. Despite her character being very stereotypical and a little bit cliched, she really does give a performance that is really, really good. And it shows because you can see all the expressions that she does in her face. You can tell by her body gestures. You can tell everything that's going on from just the plain sight of her. She really does show that her character is someone that is not to be ignored. And that is something that is very, very good. And the performance of her is just brilliant. So overall, it is a very, very good trip from uh, Christopher Nolan. So now let's just get into the stuff that doesn't really work, which is mainly the story. It's not that it's extremely bad, it's just way too confusing. I mean, sometimes you're wondering at the beginning that this guy is going to go into space. Yeah, we're fine, we get that. But then he has a trap, but when he starts talking about time travel, that's when it starts to get a bit confusing. It, it doesn't really know what exactly it needs to focus on. Again, like I wrote in my Jimmy All is by my side review. Really show us what we really want to see. I mean, he, he travels through two different cells of planets, one filled with water and one filled with ice. But you're kind of wondering, especially me when I was watching it, why is he there in the first place? I mean, all we really wanted to see is go through that time zone, sort of communicate with his family, and then go back again. What's the deal with the confusing storyline about going to these different planets and, and, and trying to sort out what's wrong with the Earth and that sort of thing? And it does get very, very confusing. I mean, at one point you're thinking, okay, he's going to go to this planet to figure out how to solve the problems that are happening on with Earth. But when he goes back to another planet, you're thinking totally different. Why is he there? What's he gone there for? And another reason is that there is a series, very briefly, boring villain in the movie, I won't spoil it for you, but let me just say that the third act villain goes and it's just a pretty much pointless character to have. They didn't really need a villain. Or maybe they did, but no, no, they didn't, no. What else is bad? Well, the time. I have to say, though, that this film is extremely long. It's over three hours. Now, unless you are a guy that is a huge fan of Christopher Nolan, I can't say why you shouldn't go and see this film. But if you are a guy that is that is that uses time, 
that really does want that doesn't really want to spend too long in the cinema, then I don't really think this is a film for you. But others, I think it, I think it'd be okay. But I like, but when I watched it, it did drag out a bit, and it did become a little bit uneven and that sort of thing. So on a whole, the time doesn't really help the film. I mean, it just spreads out, and sometimes it just becomes a clunking mess. I mean, sometimes very. F it's just not. It's not a very normal 90 minute film. It's over three hours long and a three hour film is is very long, personally, especially when you're stuck in a cinema. Three hours is a true... So on a whole, how is the film? Well, it's very difficult to judge as not only has some of some very good stuff, but it has something that Christopher Nolan, we've never really seen from Christopher Nolan. I mean, when you look at the Dark Knight trilogy and you see this film, you can clearly, you can clearly tell which one, which one is which, and you can you can see that because even though it does have a look and a feel of a Christopher Nolan movie, it can drag out and sometimes it can become a little bit un uninsertive. So unfortunately, it does drag out, but on a whole, it's not a bad ride. So if you are a if you are a Christopher Nolan fan, I don't see why you can't see it. But for anyone else, uh, I think you'll find it okay. Personally, I think I don't find it a bad film. I just think it's a little bit. I think it just has a few too many mistakes. So on a whole, not a bad try, but if you want to go and see it, you go see it. And if you want some more and if you want some more reviews from me, you can go to the uh, to the description here, go to www.cornerhouse.org and you can read some of my written reviews. And if you want to catch me on Shock Radio every Friday giving out the latest film news, then please tune in there. Until next time, I'm Sam Bolton and I'll see you again guys.